very near the top right area of this map here. So it definitely seems like there's a lot more of a spread. Like I said, I feel like there's going to be a lot more of a defensive play in these games. I feel like some people have been playing a little bit too brave and a little too risky in some of these areas here. As a comment, very somebody that I just said is playing a little bit too risky here, knowing how far down he is in this list here and should not be going up against Spider here in this first game here. As looks like he's going to get some first hits here on the connect. Nice bit of F3 here to cause a little bit of some, some destruction here, but it looks like it's not going to be enough here. That Akos fighting it out by himself here, the only Akos in this lobby here. Question is, is that going to be a smart play here or is that going to be uh, that kind of that rough play here? As looks like Spider getting some damage hit onto him though, Akame. Really? Get him, making him decide to back off this. He definitely does not want that smoke here. As he does play this off here, has yet to find a shield swap on him. And he is able to get them with the grapple. Oh, nice dodge miss towards that. He's going to try to see if he can get the full blue focus scale rush just to, just to connect onto Spider here. Looks like he's going to try to see if he can keep the chase going here as he's slowly closing in. Has yet to find a shield swap here. Nice hits all towards that as well. Beautiful reset coming in from Spider, waiting for the parry, but not enough. It looks like Spider's going to take advantage of it here. Looks like he's going to try to see if they can hold it strong. Oh, and Akame is going to miss out on the parry. And Spider clutches up the first elimination and gets it for Akame. Like I said, this is another thing that I'm telling you about. They cannot risk... Oh, wait, hold on. Okay, uh -oh. everybody decided to get in. I was like, hold on, y'all <laughs> yeah. playing this very dangerous territory now. Don't let that thorny roll get another kill because he's very infamous around here. He, he stepped, he, you step foot in his face, you're going to get rolled like a pizza. Now, like I said before, when it came, comes to Akame, Akame can't risk those early fights like that and those risky offensive plays. He's just not in that element to be able to do it. He has to play more so on the defense. And I think that's where that disadvantage really comes in for Akame here because he really... The time is not of the essence for him. Now, mind you, he still has six mm. games left and obviously still has a revival, but he's got not really that much room to play with. He really has to focus on getting those points for lasting all the way towards the very end, but he has to be able to at least uh, get, encounter some of those fights and get those eliminations when necessary. He needs to go and read the book of GG Shop. That's what he needs to do. Yeah. I think one of the things, too, is that his F2 with the Roar is a really crucial aspect in terms of his uh, his kill potential for extending combos, starting combos, and either or. But he needs to make sure that the combo breaker has been already utilized by his opponent before he wants to try to go for it. He can burn F for F, right? He can burn skill for skill. And utilizing that, yes, but when he doesn't have an ultimate, right, he's got to play a little bit more safer. And, of course, Fairy Shens, they got a 50% cost rate ultimate when they reach 100%. So they only lose half the value of their bar when it comes down to it. Now, if he doesn't have ultimate to, you know, de you know de-escalate that knockup that gives you know for instance for spider in that fight where if he did have a staff right he could get a free blue focus he would then have to make sure that he has ultimate in tow but in the early game got to be careful about that and that whole fight happening in salvation podium was kind of interesting an early ultimate from wang young as it came out in Arana with the purple armor they don't want to fight justina and he took the time to escape but over by moonfall pass we are going to see exegies wang young into this building while well, verse looking for both shots here looking for positions with the bell he's at 60 percent rage 65 percent i should say being able to pick up a soul in here considering how much rage he's been building up uh, passively over time but now he's at his cast speed for v1 and Verse is not looking too good on armor, but so he's taking his time of his repositioning and just finding that loop pattern off the ground. But back into the Salvation Podium. Arano up against Fang here near the Thorny Roller. Very dangerous predicament right here. If Arano cannot get the scare rush in time, he does find it. And as Arano is looking to chase out Fong, you know how Fong is with the dagger, he is not going to stop moving until it's his, it's until it's in his territory's benefit. And you can see if Fong is just doing back and forth. He finds Arano. And I'm not sure. Why she just passing by saying, hey guys, how's it going? You know, I'm going to hit the bell. Oh, I'm not going to worry about it. <laughs> I'm not going to go down under there. Take the I mean, chill well, if you look at it here, Roy Shishi also in another a very bottom section here um, of the placements here, 11.2. Mm -hmm. So he's in a split predicament as well where he doesn't really, uh, shouldn't be focusing on two. He needs to play more so on that defense as well here. Junchi, another various person that really needs to be doing the exact same thing. He, has. he ends up getting caught by the third party of Wang Leong. And he ends up getting that third party here. Now he ends up getting juggled. Beautiful reset though coming in from that F3. Really able to protect him from getting out of those combos and really getting absolutely destroyed here. Spider's gonna go for the reshield here. Decides to go for the back off. Goes for the blue focus to try to just distance himself a little bit from Wang Leong. And Wang Leong's gonna be able to pick up at least some decent amount of stuff here. It looks like Spider's gonna be coming back saying, hey, what's up buddy, how you doing? Looks like the Spear's gonna try to see if he can connect some alongside the fight between him and the, sh and the fan. Blue focus waiting on both sides here. Both of them missing out on it. Potentially canceling him out at each time here. Look at that. Nice little slide heading all the way in as he's closing in the gap. Oh, he's actually able to capture him. Catch him on side of the wall. Wang Liang struggling to try to keep up with it. Called the podium. And Spider is able to kill and get the elimination onto Wang Liang. Gets him out of game number one. And Spider getting his second elimination in this game. I mean, so far, like I said, he's got a long, long road to climb here. 
But 33.3, if he keeps this up with this amount of energy, I mean, Spider's done it once, and he's done it again. He's done it many a time. So it's really, it's not about doubt. It's if he can keep the same momentum for six more games. On top of, we, and if we get to the next two games, forget about it. That part. Yeah, considering that when we come into the final, uh, he likes to play the zipping picks when it comes down to double picking sometimes. And of course, Morris Isle maps into the latter half. He really gets that, you know, we said it once before, Zenkai boost, he gets himself up if he's in a below position. Now he's at the top of the board. He's kind of uh, he's kind of keeping his position pretty swell right now. He's the only other of one of two players into his lobby with two eliminations, either him and I'm going through, uh, making sure that he can uh, come off of this end with the uh, J team's pace, right? Because considering that pace has his chance of being able to come through off of this end and catching up into these uh, these marks, it would be up to his benefit in making sure. But Fonga finds a parry off of Rano, doesn't go for the animation of uh, just making sure he can just you know buy out time. And as Fang is looking to the distance, we are going to see him trying to go towards the Achilles gateway from a repositions aspect. But of course, the way she is locking in towards his direction as well. Why? Because of Romy Yang. We do see it into the Plume Castle, onto the southwest corner of the Morris Blessing. We do see Roy Shishi, right, taking his time, making sure he's good to go for the mid to late game. And of course, if he decides to go into the Romy Yang, then it's going to be his make or break when it comes to winning or losing. And in the meantime, you see Moonfall pass as J-Team's pace and AS. They're winning this one out. Center Bar Valley has TE Strailgun and WVG Spider, as well as Bowdas X and all tinkering around. If any one of these players miss it or two or more, uh, or two players or more, then it's going to be a bloodbath for sure, Dobby, right before the Romy Yang. Has to be careful here. It looks like there are going to be at least three, and it looks like one's going to get left out of that situation here. Fortunate, but looks like it's going to be between about as 5 2 2 uh, X and, and 5 2 1's Akame is going to be finding it out alongside WBG, EWG, and JL also fighting that out as well as Spider and Arano. So maybe finding this out, going airborne, trying to see if they can get some connections on the pistols. Looks like Spider is able to miss, is able to hit at least three out of those four shots here. Nice connection coming through from Spider. He's going to be able to connect on it. Going for the scale rush, trying to wait it out. Actually throws Arano off the wall here. Going to take his time here and trying to connect it here. And it looks like the blue focus is going to be able to connect beautifully alongside the shot to connect it with the pistol. The question is, can he finish it off? Oh, catches him off the backstretch with those dual halberds here. Oh, tries to catch him with the freeze, but it's not going to be enough. Oh, and he does. He's able to, but he isn't able to at least finish off the connection for it here. Spider is able to at least come back for the conjuring. The question is, can he finish this off with the rocket here as he hits the wall for some reason? And I don't, I don't understand where the tactic was for that one. He might have been just maybe going through time and hopefully making that connection. And it looks like Spider's gonna get caught inside of it. Oh, ends up hitting him with the with the nice shot from the rocket. Arano just moving and schmoving, ducking and dodging, dipping and diving. Trying not to get caught up again. It looks like he finds the blue focus here. Oh, it looks like he is. Nice bits of shreds coming through here from those dual blades, trying to connect it. Like Arano's gonna go through with the freeze. Tries to see if maybe he can go for the fake here, but it looks like he's able to connect it as well here. Spider, dangerously low, could potentially lose this. Two seconds left on the clock, and none of them wins the Realm of Yang here as they both gotta go out, go for the reset, and try to find any soul blooms if they got anything left. Yeah, I mean, Spider has possibly a Kame's uh, soul bloom back into the trenches, but into the into the energy of Arano, I'm not sure if he has one. Considering that he had himself at the point of wanting to be aggressive with the freeze, with his last freeze dash, just, just the fact that Fairy Shen had an extended duration for her ultimate doesn't mean he would have much more of an advantage than you know Spider would have in that scenario. So for him to be able to make sure it happens, he will have an opportunity in seeing about that. We do see that Spider went back towards City of Tong for his solo number two as he picked up the elimination there. And with everything coming out between Fong, he has himself in Roman depletion as well. Three minutes and 45 seconds for him to make sure he can try to find out a way of earning a kill or stealing a soul bloom as a third party and jumping right in there. And he's very accustomed towards that. He takes Chronicles out of the Book of Shaw very soon seriously and making sure he can drop right back in there but we're going to see x and arano fighting over here in the trenches nice trap going to be released out here between x and arano arano finds his parry and it's going to be a jump lmb to confirm a little bit extra damage here but he gets caught to burn out his f2 is not what he's looking at as an idealistic option but he has ultimate uh, x and look for the counter grapples into the musket shots we're going to see scarrush coming out here from x and he gets on top to the to the plateau make sure he can try to get himself to go for cooldown for f1s and getting his heal back with the damage mitigation if he wants to go right back into it now exon is playing the zipping ying right the sustain is impeccable there's the f1 and there's going to be a heal over time as exon takes the time to heal here so will arano for the armor but exon needs less time than anything and with it arano is going to go right back into it for round two of the skirmish and of course arano trying to look for the high grounds into dropping down onto his opponent's head but if exon gets himself into the spot of these slippery slopes of the tower we're going to see whether or not exon will take that to his advantage or he gets griefed by it and even they can grief exon right if he gets into ultimate he freezes X and uh, if Arano you freezes X and off of the ends of the cliffside, he won't be able to get a confirmed hit. He's just going to be seeing the slope and just start slipping and sliding. 
slip and slide and is the way of the game sometimes here. You got to be able to get yourself out of harm's way in certain areas here. Just so you don't get caught up here. But let's see what happens inside of this fight here. And this building is absolutely getting shredded. And TST ends up catching elimination onto Verse. The Tiger is going to come through and cause some issues here. Absolutely a dangerous moment to really be at here. And it looks like PST caught outside. Looks like he's going to force the ulti to come through. As Justine is going to try to just dip out as fast as humanly possible. Dangerously low. Akame and AS wants this elimination. It takes one bow shot to connect it here. And Akame is trying but missing out. As it looks like he's able to get the blue charge. And he's able to get at least a little bit of some shield going here. He's unable to. It looks like they both lost him. Trying so hard just to close in that gap, but he just further and furthers away. And that's why being a Justina sometimes is very, very helpful. It's so beautiful. That part. <laughs> and Justina has a lot to work with. It's, it's, she's a jack of all trades with being able to reset, set up uh, for an attack, and just being able to do everything she can. I love it. No, 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 but uh, we see V1 instead of V2. That's okay. We're going to have to see what's going to happen to this round. Exton is actually going to have subconscious this enchant as Shrell going to put his pressure on and gets caught. Might be getting caught into a Dragon Slayer into a Nezhaz. Yes, it is. But will there be an uppercut extension from Srelga? No. He decides to shift RMB and goes for a straight presence slam with the RMB of Perry coming out from Exxon as a response. And of course, Srelga makes sure he could put his option into the table of making sure and just locking a stagger. But nope, releases those blues. We release every single one of those. And the one, two, three from Srelga is going to come out for a Perry. Exxon going to get the elimination there and picking up his Soul Bloom as well as running that Roman Yang depletion. He's coming right back into the fat match and just picking up himself into this round. Oh, but look at this amount of excursion happening all the way around it here. So much happening around these buildings here. Fang just trying to see if he can get out of this and immediately ends up turning this around on Roy Shishi. Now Roy Shishi is on the chopping block here, has to be able to dive in and just trying to get out as much as possible here. So many explosions happening at the same time here as he ends up, looks like he's able to find himself a nice little bit of a body pickup here as Ooh. well. In between this here, ends up getting caught as another one decides to be able to bounce off this AS with the pistol traps, trying to see if they can connect it onto Fang. Fang just trying to maneuver as fast as possible here. Definitely he does not want to get caught up in the movement. Able to go through the door. AS cannot catch up. He can't catch up. You can't touch me, buddy. I'm too quick for you. As he's moving. Weave. He's weaving. He's moving. Weave, weave, weave. You gotta be careful with break. a man like that. I'm gonna break them ankles, boy. It's like, wait. <laughs> get get out he's of there. doing it. He's just a kid. Can't get can't caught out it. here slipping like that. That Can't part we gotta <laughs> we got Exxon though. I think him against Spider is what you're kinda looking for, right? This is this is the big fight. This is the big fight. This is the one both. that I've been loving uh consistently here. I've been, I've been a big fan of Exxon in terms of how he plays, and he's it's one of those sleeper picks here that a lot of people sometimes forget about here, but then usually he ends up in that top five here and he absolutely can play. Plus, Exxon just has a lot of big brain plays a lot majority of the time. And especially knowing Spider, his track record, how well he's been playing throughout so many of these seasons. Beautiful parry to be able to connect it on to Spider here. Causes that re reset here coming in from Spider here. And it looks like X is going to keep that going here, keeping that pressure right onto him here. Trying to see if he can connect the scale rush here. As he gets him getting pushed from the back slot of Spider. It looks like he's going to call the totem here. Not actually fully calling out the ulti, at least not yet here. He has to be careful here. He ends up getting smoothed, maneuvered, smoothed all the way around. And it looks like he's going to go for the reset. Beautiful F trying to see if maybe he can get some of that heals here. But Spider's just trying to destroy the rest of it here. Beautiful right click to connect onto the parry. The juggle on the X gen. Spider keeps the, the pressure going on to him and Spider is able to connect it and get the pin and suddenly good googly move. I'm sorry. Googly boogly boogermeister. <laughs> give him the give him everything going through here and he now has a gold weapon on the board for the second round Yang. Pace up against AS into the second round Yang. RMB release. We're gonna go for a second one. Clink is gonna come out here as AS looks for this lethal dive gets faded out here with the shift coming up from pace with a one two three really release those but a parry with a single edge sap gives AS enough time here but with a kill confirmation happen of course it was forbidden uh, for Pace to win that out once he gets caught to the uppercut after the F2 is down. AS was just able to pick up the elimination just like that and finds himself a dagger. Could transition it over to a fan with the crafting hammer from a shop really quickly. But coming off of this, Roman Yang lost for the second time. Exxon is now in a position of trying to find one of six players, right? Or a solo that's left behind because remember, these solo are still on the ground for now until we enter the, enter the season's whole patch for Exxon just gonna go in slotting all his money into the shop and just making sure he can try to find an advantage here for the fights now I think if that I'm not mistaken the J that he might have there is a I'm gonna say an explosive armor but it's gonna have to be up to the scene when the fight happens we will see what the case is but Pace finds his soul bloom out to the end of the dunes. He's been holding on to it. He's got three eliminations. It makes sense. He had an insurance policy the whole time, making uh, making work of it in the early right fights of the round. But 
With that being said, Exxon does in fact do ha does have explosive armor. He is making his way towards Moonfall Pass where AS and WBG Spider are coming into the realm of things, but with JL's AS, with the White Tiger's prowess, as well as the Spider, the sustained fight against those two targets, it's going to be a menace, Dobby, for Exxon to try to, you know, work it through then. It's going to be a menace, but it's also going to be a problem, depending on not only him, if he can still keep that pressure, but also any of the other players that are around it, if they end up really deciding to push forward and really get aggressive on it. That's the other thing mm. that we have to remember. The aggression coming in from a lot of these players can really dictate how the rest of the game goes. So obviously with Fang as he's getting chased by AS here. Again, why do I feel like this is a deja vu? <laughs> wasn't they just, wasn't, wasn't Fang just getting chased earlier? From yeah, what I remember? He's, he's, making, uh, he's making the mirror his, uh, you know, his domain. That's, that's his domain expansion. What he needs to do is keep moving and stop getting caught in these chases here. Okay? You need to call. Don't want to get caught up here. It looks like he's able to catch him up fully here as Action just trying to get out of harm's way here. Action looks like he's going to keep that same pressure. Oh, beautiful turnaround right onto him here and says, what's up, buddy? Nice slats coming in from the dual blades here to try to connect it as well here, making it such a problem for him. To try to close in this gap little by little. It looks like they're gonna steady rotate this around here. Nice shield. He's gonna be able to pop this on, on the FP. It looks like Fang caught between this and Spider here. Spider just trying to see if he can maneuver this to get an elimination onto him here. Does it look like he's going to succeed here? Is Fang doing an amazing job, like I said, of being able to capture that moment and separating and splitting away from everybody? Doesn't want to get caught up in a tough situation here. And obviously, this could really, really get hectic, if not for the amount of effort that's going on all at the same time. Definitely have to rotate this a little bit better here, constantly putting the, enough pressure onto it to not get caught. And Fang, yet again, staying alive for this, getting that Q, be able to do a lot of that work. And he's able to find that moment here, and both of them just trying to juggle this up. Look at AS, ends up getting hit from, I don't even know where the shot came from here, but he ends up falling all the way back down to the bottom here. Coming down all the way, come, come, come down to the, to the, to the skies above. Come on, come down. A little bit too out of there. <laughs> Flying close to the sun like it, Chris, man. Burned down. I mean, just just soaring, you know, absolutely soaring. High school musical, we're flying. Ah, uh, let me see. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta be coming out here on the captain of the basketball team, but of course, Exxon, he's balling. He's catching AS. He catches that oh. parry, dual wield sap. He's doing the work here. As Exxon looks to see the force ultimate coming out from AS's various Shen. X is going to look for those pistol shots. A lot of cannons coming out from Zui Shi. He's in the front line of danger. But we do know Exxon has that Rome and Yang depletion. So for Exxon, right now is his biggest concern is making sure that no one else comes out to sneak this kill out. But he has Rome and Yang depletion. going to click in here for five seconds. He's not going to give anyone the elimination. He's going to drop everything he can. That way he doesn't give the upper echelon of advantage for anyone who's already at a higher position. And just keeps him on the sideline inside the building. Hitting to move on fast. We'll see him next round. But the top six into this lobby. Spider, Gold Dagger, and in tow for elimination. He is the kill leader of this lobby right now. And as a Farious Shen, one of three Farious Shens that are left into this lobby. Pace is the only Justina. BRG Fang is the only Zipping Ying. And Akame is the only Akos. Now, Akame is dropping into where this Morse Blessing is dropping. Pace already on it. Finds gold armor. Akame doesn't want to take this fight for whatever case scenario. He wants to make sure, eh, you know what? I don't know if there's any third parties coming out here and keeping eyes on this because it can happen in a split second where you get caught into a spot of just taking rain shots for everything that's known. Mm -hmm. Week one, we were seeing uh, Zip Kings were just using F of F2 to just to confirm, you know, no staggers from like headshot bow shots and things of that nature, but more so just not to get grapple staggered into free musket shots that you would see normally from a quick one two motion. Now, as it comes out to Moonfall Pass, this Moonbane is one of the two last Moonbanes into this game. The transition of the zone going straight towards in, near to the tank courtyard region or more so towards the Roldania, it's going to be where it comes into more tighter uh, corners of just trying to access where you don't get hit by those Moonbane strikes. Because even though we thought after week two that Moonbanes weren't going to be, you know, avoided, like there's a truce, a truce, I should say, even the trios teams can't avoid the Moonbane. We <laughs> we were seeing the coming out between 5-2-1 and uh, for those teams that they just get caught to the Moonbane without them realizing it. And it was already a too late situation and they get eliminated just like that. And solos, it happened again into the day two where we just saw those Moonbane strikes coming back and forth between these players. And Dobby and the spacing between the players is one thing, but is it is this something where they can take it into the utilization of forcing the opponent into the Moonbane or is it too much of a risk? I think so. I, I think, because here's the thing. I know Duncan has talked about this consistently because he can't stand the random moonbase. He can't stand it. <laughs> he can't 
the amount of times that we have been back and forth over this whole Bane's breath thing is, is so amazing. I wish there was a documentary specifically on just us <laughs> talking about it because there was so many, especially when we were out, when we were out there in Chengdu and Shanghai, like that was such a crazy discussion. And I think because of that here, it definitely does give a massive disadvantage to certain players here, depending on what position they're in. But at the same time, it gives others an advantage, right? And at the same time, I, I think there is a, a lot to it that really can kind of really can kind of add forth to it but at the same time it also kind of goes hey you know there's so much opportunity that can be had for some of these teams and some of these players i think it just depends on who is going to take that advantage and when right because when we talk about when and and how much and and where all of this starts to go into i think that's when those lines start to get drawn a little bit it's very good points yeah and it's especially coming out to the players you know <laughs> having to not want to burn their skills, especially ultimates, right? Because imagine having to force your ultimate because you took a thousand damage going out from movement, right? It's just like, Absolutely. It's like not a fun time and everyone can target you. Just like right now, Paste has no ultimate. Moonbane's dropping down. He has no way of escaping here. He's trying to heal over time while he's moving away. And you can see the focus now on AS, having to burn ultimate in the Moonbane. Has himself in a really big, tough spot. If he gets caught by a Moonbane Blast, it will eat directly into his health bar coming off of this end. And, AS has to make sure that he avoids the pressure coming out from players. I mean, Akame is an ultimate now. Cannon shots coming out from Spider with the Meteor and can turn in, you know, contorting this kill. And that's going to be Spider's elimination number five for him so far. And with AS trying to move in, move in between both DRG Fang, Spider, and UHG, Pace is in the back line looking to try to grow into it. And with the Moonbane being dropped here consistently, all these players are sticking to the rotation counterclockwise and keeping the perimeter to their advantage. But wind spout from Pace is a big surprise. Spider does not see, sleep quietly to the night. He finds a parry. He looks for this F1 usage. He's going to switch it around towards the Fang and then just pay, plays a game of chicken, pretty much, in Fang's face, and then goes ahead and backs off. Pace, this man is living la vida loca. You know, he's like Ricky Martin trying to go crazy out here and just make sure his movement is on standby because he's been so <laughs> close to these Moonbane strikes. Every single one of these uh, positions, now Fang is going to be the next one opponent that he might be looking to try to re-engage. But after the reset with Bo, restringing that arrow, uh, restringing the uh, the twang of that bow string, and then, of course, looking to lock into AS as that gold fan comes out here, Dobby, and an ultimate from Pace coming into play. Nice little bit of pacing that coming through here as it looks like PST is just trying to maneuver this out and getting caught and he ends up en actually getting a free elimination because of here as AS dangerously low, just trying not to maneuver it out in any which way, shape, or form. And sometimes that really can be the absolute disadvantage that you can have here. And it looks like PST, it looks like he had a little bit of the, the disadvantage, but was able to successfully get out of that situation here. And now the point starts to close in a little bit more as both teams are going to start fighting this out a little bit more here on the outstretch. PST, Junshi, getting a little bit aggressive. Beautiful parry onto it to connect, but not isn't going to fully connect onto that fight here. That spider's going to be right off the back. Yo, beautiful yes. Nato to send spider away here. See all of those shots coming through here from that is absolutely dangerous here as they do need to continue to keep that spread going as reality spider really does have the opportunity here in drawing so much damage from some of these players without really having to get close if need be here. And it looks like Junchi, beautiful parry to connect it as PST is going to be able to go through the freeze here. Both of them are fighting this out. This is a 1v1v1v1 1v1 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 here. And every one of them, none of them are deciding to team, team up at all and trying to fight at least one. They're all fighting this out. It's an absolute bloodbath on each side here as one of them actually does call the totem. And it looks like the ulti does get called out here. And it looks like there might be an advantage here. So he has to be careful. I don't know why Spider lagged a little bit. Trying to see if he can capture PST on the outskirts. Oh, and he ends up doing that. Just that alone. PST is forced to be able to go for the shield swap here, as now he finds Fang down at the bottom here. Nice hits to be able to connect it with a rocket. The question is, is that going to be enough here? And it doesn't fully look like it here. Still outside of it as he's floating down, trying to see if he can connect it and sending him outside of the circle here. Fang is going to be able to use the shield to do exactly what he needs to here. Beautiful reset. Fang just trying to keep this game alive. PST just doesn't want to get caught up here. And this gold shield has no shield at all, so no one wants to risk stealing it. Yeah. Pace. A really tough position. I think this is what the play the players are focusing. We saw when Spider had a little bit of delay when he was in cannon form, but he made sure to focus back on the Jacina because she could disrupt the whole entire round. We know Pace is in second place with four eliminations. He's making sure he can try to keep him to five, and keeping elimination off a of spider would be huge, crucial. He would grab an MVP off the rip into day three for himself. 
And of course, blue armor is not going to make that day any easier. And having to swap that was a majority decision that had to have been made. Now, Spider up against Pace here in a 1v1 here. Close uh, close position for that horizontal with the blue focus. A fan wind spout coming out here. Spider gets caught. He doesn't get caught to the second one, but the tornado is going to come out here where we're going to see Fang finds a kill. Elimination off of Spider. Pace finds the ultimate cast. He gets caught to the beacon drop as he gets staggered away, but Jueishi can get frozen here as Pace can just look for it. And he's going to go for it. There's going to be an RMB release. There's a cannon mode. It misses the shot. Pace is avoiding these cannon shots like he's Neo from the Matrix as Pace is looking to try to go to the freeze into the midair. We're going to see a charge RMB comes out here. Joyce, she getting hit directly. And outside of the mech, he goes through for a free freeze. Number six for Pace. He's coming out against Fang. Fang is on this build, but he can't get out of the range of this. He dodges that splash. Staff coming out for another wind spout. And with this, Pace gets the elimination into that zone kill for MVP into round one, folks.